Hey guys, so I thought I would do a quick code blog on what's been happening with Acehelp, uh, more around the Elm side of things. So before we start, let's just quickly take a look at the master branch and how the code base looks like right now. And to set some context, the way we wanted to start off uh, with Acehelp was to have a help button show up on the client page. And the user can click on the help button and some helpful articles would show up, right? To that extent, uh, let's look at the state of our code right now. So if we take a peek at our main.elm file, uh, we see that our model is a record type uh, with articles as a list of articles short, uh, which is nothing but another record type with an ID, title, and summary field. Then it has the container anim field, uh, which takes care of the slide and animation of the container. Uh, we will ignore this for now. Uh, we'll, look at, we'll look at it later. It basically uses the Elm style animations library to do the animations. We'll look at that in a later video. Finally, there's the current app state field, which is of type app state, which is a union type, which can be either minimized or maximized, depending upon whether or not the user has clicked on the help button or closed the help pane. And then we have our init function, which holds the initial state of the model and uh, a command or no command. We then have a couple of view functions that basically render based on the state of the model. <clears throat> we also have a couple of messages and the update function. We, in the subscriptions, we are also subscribed to animation updates. And all of this is tied up into our main function which is an HTML program to make our handy dandy app. Now what I wanted to share was, so let's take a look at how we do our API calls. In the update function, if we take a look, we notice that when it receives the set app state message, now this message is would be fired whenever the user clicks on the help icon or when the user clicks on the close button on the top bar when the app is in the maximized state. Now going back to our update function when it receives the set app state message and if the new state uh, to be set is maximized we do a bit of animation updates to slide in the container and then we also call the get article list function which gives us a command and what is that command it basically sends out an http request and if and we handle that request uh, with the article list received message so if it succeeds, we update the model by setting the articles to article list, which was received in the HTTP response. And we don't really care if it fails. We will take care of the failure in a later stage. Now this works, but what I wanted to share was an alternative to handling side effects like HTTP request. Let's check out our new branch and look at the updated code. Now, ignoring the other updates, we see that our good old get article list function has been replaced with this line of code. 
Now, what is this task? Tasks make it easy to handle side effects or async operations that may fail, like HTTP requests. Let's take a look at article list sections init function to understand this. The init function takes the request article list HTTP request and converts it into a task using the HTTP to task function. If we take a look at the documentation, we see that the task is part of the Elm Lang core package. It also says that tasks make it easy to describe asynchronous operations that may fail, like HTTP requests or writing to a database. It also says that if we have a task of type task string and user, this means that when we perform the task, it will either fail with a string message or succeed with a user. Now to perform or use the task, it provides two functions, perform and attempt, both of which will execute the task. The only difference being we use perform when we know that the task won't fail, whereas attempt has an expectation of failure. In our case, since HTTP requests can fail, we will be using the task.attempt function. Now, it is also worth noting that both these functions convert the task to a command. So basically, whatever is described in the task is performed by the Elm runtime through these commands. The main purpose of using a task here was that if we would want to make HTTP calls that depend upon other HTTP calls, then tasks are really good at this. That is to say that tasks can be chained together to handle effects that depend upon other effects. We could use the task.andthen function to chain together a task and a callback function. It takes in two arguments, a function that returns a task and another task. So first task XA would run and if it succeeds, the result of it is passed as input to the function which gives back another task, which then gets run. So let's say we want to get the article list first by making an HTTP request to the article list API and then get the article contents of the first article from that list by making another HTTP request to the article details API then we could do something like this. So what's happening here is that once the request for the article list is completed, the output of that is passed as input to the function getFirstArticle, which takes out the first article from that list, gets its ID, and passes it on to the request article function. Now the request article function takes in an article ID and returns back a HTTP request article, which we then convert it to a task, which is then run. Now once both these tasks are executed successfully, we call the article loaded message, which in turn updates the model and thereby the view. So with these updates, if we click on the ace help help icon, it should now directly display as the contents of the first article. And there you have it. I hope this video helped you understand tasks better. Until next time, bye guys.